Stay tuned now for Politics and Your Health with Dr. Victor Sternberg on 1460 WVOX. Good morning. It's 9.03. Welcome to Politics in Your House, starring Dr. Victor Sternberg here on 1460 WVOX and worldwide on WVOX.com. Dr. Sternberg is here each and every Friday at this time. He's a periodontist by trade, but he is committed to your overall health. Uh, He's concerned about prevention. He's committed to prevention, but he's very committed to understanding and helping you weave through how the politics of this nation affects your health. Without further ado, good morning, Dr. Victor Sternberg. Good morning. It was a tough ride in because another truck stopped traffic on the Hutchinson's River Parkway. This seems to be an unending problem that has not been solved. No, and they, they're working on it, but everything that they do, including putting up extra signs and, and words in the roadway, doesn't seem to help. They need to do something further, probably, no. doctor. You have your usual mm-hmm. bunch of arrows in your quiver. What's at the top of your queue? First, let me discuss some health care issues. I see you put some things on my desk, and I'll get to those. Um, number one, uh, this year, 2017, I think it was two th- the, maybe the 2018, we set a record in this country for gun deaths, 40,000 mm-hmm. gun deaths. A significant number were suicides. But this is the highest number since they kept start keeping records. Mm-hmm. So for those of you that think guns are innocuous, 40,000 people are dead because of them, uh, this, because of their availability not because they exist. Second, interesting article out of Sweden. They did a long-term study of men that had prostatectomies, removal of the prostate, compared to a watch for waiting Mm -hmm. for uh, cancer. And they found there was a significantly higher death rate among those that did not have the prostatectomy. There was a significant, because there's been a debate about that. I know, and I've looked at the literature coming out of Scandinavia they have very different results. In fact, it's interesting because a lot of men that have a large prostate, they have a procedure where they go through the urethra and they kind of uh, terp, they, they kind of reduce the size of your prostate. And often they find malignant cells when they remove it. Mm-hmm. And often those are seen as non-aggressive. When they compare the outcome to those patients that had that done, compared to people that had regular biopsies of the prostate, there was a higher death rate among people that did not have prostate biopsies. By, by, so, how, by how great a number do you know? Oh, it was a 40% difference in That's death huge. rates. That's a lot. So one of the things that we struggle with men is that they're, you know, we're told that, you know, we'll die of prostate cancer. Every man who dies has prostate cancer and dies of something else. There is, there are many men, it's the second leading cause of death among men, prostate cancer. And I think it gets a little undertreated because... Personally, I see patients that might have died of this. Especially, so, doctor, that we're living longer now. Uh, that's going to change, skew things a bit, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, the prostate cancer seems to occur inevitably mm-hmm. as you get older. But the, uh, the people I've seen that have died have not been old folks. They've been people that are younger. In fact, the younger this is diagnosed, the is more, more aggressive. Mm-hmm. And we have this debate about PSA, PSA no, PSG yes. It, it's, it's a struggle we have in our culture and unfortunately, it's all about prevention versus um, cost. And uh, the, the word is still out on this. And I would urge you all, the all men that have uh, probably the age of 40 on, I would get a PSA done regularly. Mm-hmm. I would have a prostate exam done regularly. Uh, don't rely upon statistics that belie the fact that, that it's, it's innocuous for most men. It is not. And uh, that's the, uh, the advice for the wow. day. Now, before I get into some of the other stuff you have, Bob, I have a lot to talk about. Oh, well, I just think, figured you'd put it in your so I, quiver I'm go- somewhere. I'm going to start with my profession because I have been practicing dentistry over. I'm going back to my reunion to dental school, 50-year mm-hmm. reunion since I graduated. Wow. And 40% of my classmates are still practicing. So we have a very committed group of dentists who years ago they would retire early. We don't retire. Mm-hmm. We like what we do. And one of the things I've noticed in my profession, and I am very protective of my profession, but I am mm-hmm. not also uh, going to going to uh, uh, smooth over things that are not right. Two things that are interesting. At Columbia University today, we take in foreign dentists who trained elsewhere in, the United, in their own countries. Mm-hmm. In order for them to get a license in the United States, they have to spend five semesters, which is two and a half years, at Columbia to get trained. The cost per semester for a foreign student, hold on to your hat, is $95,000. Wow. $475,000 for two and a half years of school. Okay. Now, that has, a, that has an adverse effect on the public, and I'll tell you why. 
And I mentioned this before. When you're in debt, you have to meet your payments and live your life. Mm-hmm. That means you have to generate income in your practice yes. in order to pay your bills. Mm-hmm. That creates an incentive to do things that are not warranted or necessary. And in my own practice, over the course of my career, I continually see patients coming to me with plans that a dentist presented for things to be done that are, quote, necessary. And I can tell you that it is shocking to me what some patients are going through for care they ne- they don't need now and they may never need. I had a woman come Such to me as. from New Rochelle that was having orthodontics done by a general practitioner, telling her that if she didn't have her teeth realigned, her gums would recede and it could never be fixed by a periodontist. I examined this woman. She had just started the orthodontics. She wanted a second opinion. She had a perfect bite. Her teeth were aligned as if they were treated by an orthodontist. Mm -hmm. She had perfectly healthy gums. And so I told the lady, go back. I'll send a letter to your dentist. You're entitled to a refund. There's no treatment necessary. And I was shocked in this day and age that this goes on. And, and, And I see this repeatedly. And it disturbs me because there's so much dental care that is necessary. And when we get into this realm of that which can wait for many years or that which never has to be done, it creates distrust and it unduly taxes our patients' finances. Sure it does, and it, and, it, and, and it tarnishes the industry itself. But doctor, isn't that in some way a sign of the times that so much now in society has turned into what one can get away with Yep, and one, what one can do to take care of their own nest in deference to everything else? You know, we are a capitalist society, and I applaud it. However, you know, capitalism, uh, unbridled capitalism, has negative effects. Of course it does. Just like socialism has negative effects. You know, we've talked because of your experience on Wall Street, what Mm -hmm. what went on on Wall Street in 2007, 2008, and still goes on. You You could see it coming, though, you see, as you've seen these things coming in medicine, and nothing stops it. We, we have a society, as I said before, that won't have serious conversations, and there are two reasons for that. Most of us are uninformed about the real issues that are driving these, these problems. Mm-hmm. And the second is the <clears throat> industries that are at risk for losing uh, money or having regulation are going to fight tooth and nail. Mm-hmm. So given that, it's very difficult to bring about change. I mean, Bob, we've been, since I've been on this radio show, we've talked about the uh, Obamacare uh, Health Affordable Care, Care Act. When the administration went into power in, in 2017, their first order of business was to repeal and replace. It's not happened. Well, there was no, the, we've not heard the replacement yet. We've not heard right. that proposition even. Right. So, other than some scaled down de minimis right. plans. And, and I, we brought up on the radio last week that the number of people nationally that have enrolled is down. And one of the reasons is, there's two reasons. One is that people who are, who are no longer have a mandate are not going to get insurance, many. And the second is the government's pulled back its spending on advising people to get the, get, the, uh, get the plans. So that issue has not been dealt with. And we've dealt with, we talk about Michael Cohen and we talk about all this stuff. Nothing gets done in that area. And even to this date, you know, we talk about gun, re- gun reform and gun control. That's, that's a non-issue. So it is very disturbing because... What's happening is we're not we're unwilling to deal with serious issues in this country well, for a lot of reasons. Th- thought and conversation and politicians like sound bites rather than details. There is no very few people are committed, and I was listening to the conversation today about schools. Mm-hmm. And by the way, it is um, the reason that each school district buses children to private schools mm-hmm. is because the, a parents group went up to Washington, and went up to Albany, and they lobbied for it. And there's nobody lobbying against it. Because in, in my own school district in Briarcliff, there are children going to Hackley, private schools, why? religious schools, and we're paying for it. But and why? Because the people that want it have influence in Albany. That is why. There's no, no one's marching up there and saying, this is ridiculous. We're spending our money on something that if they want to go to private schools, they pay the tuition but, and they pay for the, for but, the transportation. But you know what, doctor, and, and you may have heard some of the commentary about that. That is all well and good if you have a just reason for doing it and say right. it. But when a school district decides to hide the kinds of things that you just said, it undermines their credibility and it insults the taxpayers. 
my friend, you are right. And in my own school district, they say it is because the state has promoted it primarily, not by law, but the parents who, who made the issue, who went up to Albany, formed a, a, a consortium, and they made a political point, and the, and the people in Albany listened. It's not a law. They have decided to allow it to happen because there's too much opposition well, to change well, it. Well hence, but, well, hence the lesser case. Someone living, we'll say, in the west end of New Rochelle, and they want to go to, we'll say, an Italian school in, um, I don't know, Mount Vernon. It could right. be the... Well, that person has just as much a right then to be to be, to be bust out as some rich person in the North End. Absolutely. And it's, it's an issue that in the case of this rising cost of our property taxes, this is not a minor issue. This cost us, each one of you out there are paying more in real estate well, taxes. Why do the school districts then dissemble and lie? And, 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 and as we've done here in New Rochelle, we have actually a very fine school district overall but their own administration and board has undermined their reputation by their, by their dis, disingenuous behavior. Yeah. Well, that's, reflect that, that attitude from New Rochelle right up through every level of government in New York State and up to the federal government. This is not an anomaly. This is the norm. It is 914. You're listening to Politics in Your Health, starring Victor Sternberg. He is here, Dr. Sternberg, each and every Friday at this time. In a few moments, the doctor will reopen the phones, but more from him first. So uh, I'm going to just drop one more thing on the educational issue, and then we'll get to health care. Um, you know, New York City wants to change the way they accept students into the elite high schools mm -hmm. because the minorities are underrepresented. And they want to make that 7% of each school in New York will send children to Stuyvesant and Bronx High School of Science. Mm -hmm. And the Asian families are up in arms because the schools are dominated by Asian children because they do better on the exams. The argument comes up about, well, they're getting tutored. They're getting encouraged. Their families are insisting they study more. That's good. Yeah. But, and so we want to change the rules because we want to have diversity represented by the population, independent of the, of the ability or the test scores of an individual. The one great thing about our country, which is unique in much of the world, is we're a meritocracy. meritocracy. And a meritocracy has winners and losers, I'm afraid to tell you. That's how life is. With a safety net. And right, well, listen, instead of worrying about sending 7% of your children from a particular failing school in, in, the New, in New York to Stuyvesant, we should be putting tremendous amount of resources into the schools where they are. Of course. You know, many years ago, Yonkers integrated its schools because they felt that the children on the west, uh, on the east side were getting a better education than the children on the west side. And so they, they changed the, they bus children across county. You know what's happened in the last number of years since that happened? Hmm. Nothing has changed. Minority children are still not performing well. And a lot of people have fled the community because instead of saying this school district, this school or this school district needs more funds and resources, we refuse to allocate them because it is very, I've said this before, two patients walk into a hospital. One has got pneumonia and may die and the other one stubbed their toe. We don't spend the same amount of money on both people. Right. If we have a needy population that needs more effort, spend more money. Why isn't it done? Because of unions, because right. of politics. And, and also manage that money and allocate the resources thoughtfully. Absolutely, and make it evidence-based. I've, 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 I have talked oh, about it. that bad word again. I know, it's terrible. Actually, facts are terrible things. Doctor, isn't that paradoxical that the, the, the group, and it's our friends on the left that are always calling for evidence-based politics when it comes to schools and education, don't want evidence-based education? Absolutely. Is that a paradox or that, what? That is a very interesting paradox. And evidence-based is a dirty word in our society. It means that your opinions are fine, but your facts are not no, supported by truth. It has little merit. Doctor, are you ready for calls? I want to just say one, one other thing, but you have something on, this I'll be happy to talk about, the single, slay the single payer myth. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of homework in this area, and I want to just share with you something. Billions. I, as a, as a private practice individual, pay $30,000 a year for health care insurance mm -hmm. for my family. I also pay $9,000 a year in Medicare tax, personally, to support the Medicare system. Thank okay. you. So well, I know that, but I've paid hundreds of thousands of dollars over my career. I still have to pay $30,000 for health care. Mm -hmm. And for me, when they say this single payer system is a myth, I want you to look at what I am paying personally, mm -hmm. in addition to all the taxes that I pay to support my employees, et cetera. Many of you out there who get health care insurance through their employer 
have never had to come up and dip deep, deeply into your pocket. Mm -hmm. Because as long as the employer pays it, whether it be this new Rochelle or your company, you don't really understand what it's costing many of us who are working for themselves. And the system, they want to slay this. I understand that it's going to be expensive. And, and, and the American people may not want to dip into their pocket. The New Rochelle teachers may not want to give up $20,000 of their income to buy health care insurance mm -hmm. for everybody else because they're getting it for very little. Mm -hmm. So that may shift the dollars from the school district to the individual. People say, wait a minute. You know, so the, 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 those who are lobbying against a single payer system, I'm not saying it's an easy change. And I get all the, I'm very clear of the pros and cons. Just realize how much many of us are paying already and getting something that we many of us can't afford. I'm ready wow. for some calls. Okay, it is 919. You're listening to Politics and Your Health. Please join the conversation, 636-0110-914-636-0110. Mitch, you're on with Dr. Sternberg. Good morning, Mitch. Good morning, morning. But just as a favor, if you could recommend a good proctologist for uh, Bob. Uh, but did you say what? proctologist what? or psychologist? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? And besides, but, but, but uh, I just you brought up some very interesting numbers at the beginning of the show. I, I think uh, you said that uh, <laughs> gun deaths have have spiked, right. skyrocketed yes. to the a highest really ever recorded offensive, offensive, outrageous, and what should be. The number, maybe the number one issue for not what I'm just about to say, gun deaths, uh, over 40,000. I, I just can't say how sad that makes me to hear that. Uh, but I was reading something the other day which I thought you would find interesting. Uh, fentanyl. Yes. As of, as of 2016, that's when they yep. last did the numbers, uh, surpassed uh, heroin as the number yes. one yep. Uh, yep. drug. Over 18,000 people, young and, and remember, this, this is mostly young people died of drug overdose due to fentanyl. Usually, it was mixed with another drug, but fentanyl was the number one part of the drug. Uh, heroin uh, became dropped to number two, slightly under 16,000. That's 34,000. Uh, but if you add up all the drug overdose... Uh, 70,000. 70,000. Mm -hmm. uh, a little under 64,000 in 2016. Se by the uh, way, 2017, yeah, it was 70,000. Yeah. Right. And, yeah, but, you know, if I just may add, the 40,000 number that you uh, indicated, you know, what we don't talk about is it's not from someone protecting themselves from a, someone's an intruder. Most of those uh, 40,000 deaths are due to uh, suicide or accident. So if right. you were to add that 40,000 to the this over 60,000 deaths right. that we've got. It's over 100,000, mostly young children, died by accident or suicide right. uh, in this country. Uh, if I could just point out that in Vietnam, uh, in, we lost 55,000 right. young women and women, which was, which, to, you know, gives me shivers. O well, over doing, and that was doing, Mitch. We're, we're just doing each year now we're doing twice the number. Right, you know, Mitch. I said that last week. One hundred and fifteen thousand people died in two thousand seventeen from either suicide or from uh, uh, opioids. Uh, that's more it, recent. It, uh, it's a it, it is a huge problem that I never hear addressed in the Congress. You know, years ago when AIDS came out, we had these hearings. That some some dentists, five of his patients, had died from AIDS. And uh, they, they thought the dentist was not sterilizing his instruments. They had hearings in the Congress. They had this woman, remember, Bergalis. We, you know, we had all kinds of rules about how to, how to sterilize things. And it was a national, we never stopped talking about it. AIDS was going to kill everybody. You know, this dentist killed these people, by the way. He, he injected his own blood, and it was, yeah, it was forgotten what, the issue. What a sick thing. We're going to take another call. Mitch, thank, thank you very you. much for thank the you. call. We go to Lewis. Good morning, Lewis. Thank you Good for morning, Lewis. Dr. Sternberg. Good morning. Good morning, Bob. Uh, quick question. The, uh, the example that you gave on foreign students in dental school right. and the extra amount of years they have to stay right. and the tuition. Was that example about the woman who had perfect teeth and you would write a letter for, was she seeing a foreign doctor? Because no, she was actually, actually she was, she was seeing a couple here in New Rochelle. Um, was, not foreign. And that was not foreign. But remember, American students, here's the other side of the coin. The foreign students who come here, went to most countries pay for their education, college. In America, the average student getting out of dental school who went to, went to a private college 
and then went to a dental school, is coming out with debt approximately of a half a million dollars. Uh, if they go to graduate school, as I did, it can be three quarters of a million dollars. The right, cost right, of right. education is is strangling people and creating poor behavior. Wow. Right, right, right. I, um, that, that's true, but I, I also feel, going back to another comment, that every country has its winners and losers. I don't consider the United States uh, experience one of... Uh, uniqueness that we have winners and losers i i think the winners in any country are the ones with money uh, you know without getting too specific and the losers are the ones that have been ostracized for we, one reason doctor, or another. what's that you thank you for well the you know what reason. i would like to say lewis the following i was i came from no money my parents if they had a dollar in the bank it was a good day mm -hmm. and i was able to get a public education in new york city schools i was able to go to city college for free and I'm a big proponent of that, so I got to college free. But when I went to dental school at the time, my total tuition for the four years was $8,000. Uh, Today it's $400,000. But so what we are creating this issue about education, but you know, the, the, there is you can transcend it, but it's getting very difficult, much more difficult than it was when I was growing up. Incredible stuff. We move on now. John, you are on with Dr. Sternberg. Good morning. Good morning, John. Oh, good morning. Nice to speak to both of you. Yes. Uh, Dr. B belated uh, Happy Hanukkah, by Thank the way. Thank you. Uh, to you. Um, and Bob, just in case, Merry Christmas and Happy oh, well, New Year, in well, case thank, I don't get to talk to you again. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> okay, very quickly, you were back to uh, at the top of the show, you were talking about prostate trouble and yes. prostate cancer. Yes. And I was curious about something, because about, I think it's at least 10 or 12 years ago, you might remember there was a big, big push in the media and here locally, Joe Torrey was involved with this with mm -hmm. the Daily News, and they had um, uh, encouraged all of us males of a certain age to go to our doctors or to our local doc in the boxes and have a blood test done right. called the PSA. Right. And um, I'm wondering now, because frankly, Doc, I don't want anybody inside of me who don't got to be there, you know? I understand. Uh, you're, if, you're, if, uh, you're very straight, I guess. He's it. in here with us. <laughs> Does the damn test work? Because I've heard both sides. Yeah. I've heard, yes, it works. But then I've also heard that there's some questions about it. And since you yes. read all the literature, I was wondering if you, would have, if you had an opinion yeah, on that. I do have an opinion. And I have, I would say the following. The PSA is a screen. If it's elevated, if it goes up from year to year or quickly, there's another test called an MRI they can take of your prostate. It's very accurate. And that test can then lead to the need for a biopsy. But I think that, like a, just like ma uh, uh, mammograms, there are women who are picked up early and mm -hmm. those who are picked up uh, later in the disease process. It's a matter of being intuitive and preventive. Having a PSA alone is not enough. Yeah, doctor, the, we have seen some stories that, that dispute whether a PSA is valuable or not. Why is in, that? In of itself, because, you, because the, a lot of the elevated PSAs are due to cancers that are indolent or maybe don't never to be, have to be treated. Indolent meaning they're not active? They're very they're active. active. Okay. But there is, I don't want people to get lulled into a sense of security. The PSA is one test. It can lead to an MRI, which is non-invasive, which is very okay. predictable. If the MRI is normal, they can just monitor what, you. What about the classic digital exam, which I wish on Mitch, endle Mitch endlessly? Well, it's a way to feel the prostate and feel whether it feels enlarged or whether it feels abnormal. It's just another simple test that takes a, a less than a minute. Yep. These are all things that can be done to prevent you from being missed with a lethal cancer. Okay, Chris, you are on with Dr. Hey. Sternberg. Thank you hey, for good calling. Good morning, Doc. How are you? Happy good morning. Holidays. Thank you. Same to you, Mick. Yeah, uh, just a quick uh, point. You know, when uh, that I was following up my call with Bob this morning, when you send your child to another public school, okay, outside of your district, you pay tuition uh, to that school. So it's not it's not that you, you know you you're taking out going to another public school. And the other thing I want to bring out is uh, as far as these. Uh, uh, Bronx High School of Science, all of these special schools, okay, I'm not a big fan of them, okay, uh, and the idea of having them strictly merit-based, I don't think is, I think that these schools should reflect uh, the community and the society that uh, that's what public education is about, and it also gives those students a chance to uh, intermingle with each other, you know, and, and help each other. Chris, I understand your viewpoint, but I must tell you that we don't live in a world where um, we all mix together. You know, there are people who go to Harvard and MIT 
uh, where because they qualify to get in those institutions, they have opportunities there to excel because they have this particular ability. We have we have sports teams that choose people on ability, not because we want diversity. There are many areas we have musicians who are chosen based upon ability, not diversity. Diversity should be the outcome that of meritocracy. I think when you start to engineer and you want to have things a certain way because you like kids to mix with each other, I think you're, 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 you're getting into a place that has not worked historically. And I think it's important. I think the schools, every school should be exceptional, not just, but we should have a place for exceptional students. And I feel that from my own experience and from, from the look at the Asian population in this country, should they be excluded because you want to have diversity? Of course. All right. Thank you very much for the call, Chris. We go to Anthony. You will certainly have the last word. Thank Anthony. you, Anthony. Good morning, Anthony. Good, good morning. Uh, just a quick comment. Not every kid that plays baseball deserves to play in AAA or the majors. Amen. So Amen. My, Amen. 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 You're right. Okay. In reference, in reference to the PSA, my own personal experience. People, what people need to understand is that just because your PSA is elevated does not mean that that's not normal for you. You're right. Okay, that's a generalization. I, I've had an elevated PSA. I get tested every year. Uh, I get an internal every yes. year. Um, at, at one point, the first time, it jumped from year to year significantly. So I spoke, I sat down with my doctor, and we decided that a biopsy was, yes. was the best. And, and you were fine, right? It, we got to run, but you were fine? I was fine, and you got to understand, it's just a baseline. I understand. It's just a baseline. Understood. Talk Listen, Anthony, we have to go. But Appreciate the information. Great call. Dr. Sternberg, your bona fides, please. Dr. Save My Teeth, look at our website and give us a call. We'll be happy to meet you. Folks, you've been listening to Politics in Your House, starring Dr. Victor Sternberg, heard each and every Friday at this time on 1460 WVOX. Thank you to Jovan C. Richards behind the glass engineering. Good job today on Bob Marone. We look forward to a great day of broadcasting. It's about 38 degrees and overcast. Some rain later today, getting up to 50. Have a great one. 1460 WVOA.